Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be working on our 2018 F-150. I'm having an issue where my hood ajar notification keeps popping up even though the hood is shut. So we're going to have to take it apart, figure out what's wrong, and then replace the part with a new one. So we're going to walk through how to do that step by step. Now this issue has been happening sporadically with the truck. It hasn't been happening that often, but it's been happening enough where it needs to get fixed. Now the issue on this lies underneath the hood. All right, on, on these trucks, you know, some of them have a pin over here that comes up and hits the top of the hood. But on the 2018, the hood sensor is actually built into this latch right here. So we have to take this apart and make it and replace it. Now I've seen a lot of people take their trucks to the dealers to get this fixed. And when you take it to the dealer, it's about a $450 fix. But if you wanna buy the part online, you can probably save around $300 and then spend 30 minutes for yourself fixing it. So a lot of people seem to be having this problem. And one of the ways it manifests itself is you could be sleeping at night and then your alarm randomly goes off. And sometimes when that happens, it's specifically because your hood ajar decided to kind of stop working. I've seen it that happen. I've also seen it happen when you open your hood and then after you open your hood and you shut it, then the hood ajar stays on. If you slam it or reposition it, you, the hood ajar will go off. Now that can be caused by the switch on the hood latch. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take this one out and then we're gonna compare it to the new one that I got from Ford. Now this hood latch here actually sets the height of the hood in the front. And one of the things you wanna do before we take this apart is we actually wanna mark it so that we know exactly where it is. So on some, if you take it apart, maybe you can see the marks on the frame or on the chassis where it is. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a piece of tape on the uh, top side here, top side here, and then on each one of the sides so that I know exactly where it is before I take these screws out. Now, if you want to, there's a bunch of push pins here that you can pull out and after you take them out, you can get a little bit more room to do this, but I think I'm okay. Now with the blue tape marked, I'm gonna remove these bolts, one and two. Now to get at these two bolts, I'm just using a 10 millimeter socket and loosen it. Now it's important that you don't drop these because it won't be as easy to get them out from in front of the radiator. This connector is included with the new one, but what I'm going to do is you push this down and then you pull the connector out. So it's a separate piece from the wire that's going to pull out. There we go. So the connector is out now. So now we can move on to the latch. Now for the latch, we're going to squeeze this so that this pops out and then we can remove this pin. I squeeze the two ears on this and as you squeeze those two ears, you should be able to pass it through the bracket. And then after you do that, you can go ahead and pull this out. So here we go. We have the full latch out. So let's go ahead and bring it in the garage and take a look. Okay, so now we have the two parts here, the old one and the new one that I'm going to be replacing with. So this is a genuine Ford part. I'll leave the part number in the description, but here's the part number for it. So the part that fails is actually on the back side. It's the switch typically. So the way it works is the switch is underneath in here and you can see the switch is pretty much a disaster. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to swap with the new one. But with the new one, you can see that the switch is cleaned. You can see that little bit of what looks like glue or something there. So this should be, should fix the problem that I've been having. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this on. Now it's gonna be easy to put this back on. All I really have to do is feed the wire through here and through here where it was before, plug this in and then bolt it back up. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're gonna do the cable first. And to do this cable, kind of exactly as we talk through, we're gonna put it through here first, where it belongs. 
get it into position, put the cable through, and then we're just gonna push this back into place. And now it's latched, it's where it needs to be. Then we're gonna do a quick rotate. We're gonna plug this connector back in. Clicked. Now we're ready to go ahead and bolt it back into place. Now these are the special bolts that they use for it. They have a serrated edge here so that it keeps better hold. So make sure you use the same bolts and you don't swap them for anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put these bolts right back in. Now you can see we lined everything back up with the tape on the left side and the right side. So that located the top, that located the top there, this located the left. Everything's back where it should be. Now we can go ahead and we can test the hood latch, make sure everything works, and make sure nothing's showing up on the screen. Okay, hood latch works. Now we'll go ahead and check to make sure the jar thing doesn't pop up. Okay, so now we'll shut this door and we'll check to see if the hooded jar pops up. No notifications, so everything's cleared, everything seems to have worked. All right, so we're probably about two weeks later now and I haven't had any issues with the hooded jar notification coming up, which I was previously having. So by replacing that front switch on the front chassis of the truck, everything got fixed. Now the previous switch I ended up just throwing out because there's really no need for it anymore, but it really was a simple job. The part costed $70 at Tasca Parts and it took me about less than a half an hour to do while I was filming this. So I'd expect you to be able to do it quicker. And it's something that only requires simple tools so anyone can do it. Thanks for tuning in to Smacky's Garage. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you next time.